it's tough to tell from this angle, but I'll try to do this just a little bit. See that that's all the way above my foot. Deeper down, you're looking at about a half a foot. And that's going to do it for us on Good Day Maine, taking our final bow and riding off. I'm able to talk to you and shovel this all with just one hand. Gives you an idea of just how light it is. Say lawnmakers are expected to come into Augusta today and possibly override. You can see this tree splintered right here, almost at the base of it, narrowly missing this home behind me, just before the Salmon Falls Road Bridge. Uh, you can tell right now that traffic is down to one lane. Both the House and Senate are going to vote on this today, and if it does pass, with every step along the way to the Togus VA, these people can actually see that hospital from where we are at this point. What you can also see this morning is that police have been monitoring the scene ever since last night. Then he posted bail not long after that and has been free ever since then. Poland Spring is going to be able to collect up to 603,000 gallons of water a day here. She was a daddy's girl for years. I always referred to her as my precious. A 21-year-old with her whole life ahead of her. Police say a drunk driver killed Taylor Gabry and took off. Anyone that knew her fell in love with her. She was my sweet, and I was Mama Bear. Tina Trask and Ricky Gabry are overcome with grief, knowing their daughter is never coming home. I keep looking, and I keep hoping that this is just a horrible, horrible nightmare, and she's just going to walk through that door. Gabry's parents say she was living in Wilton with her boyfriend. Her parents believe she was out celebrating New Year's Eve and eventually chose to walk all the way from Wilton to their home in Farmington. She put herself in a dangerous situation trying to come home. Police say Gabriel was hit early on New Year's Day near Franklin Memorial Hospital. Investigators say witnesses told them the driver didn't stop. Makes me very angry. You never know. He could have done something to, to try to help her. Police later found 25-year-old Tommy Clark at a nearby hotel. He's now charged with aggravated operating under the influence, and police say more charges are pending. I don't know that there's justice enough for that. Hours before going out, Gabri posted on Facebook asking people to not drink and drive. At first, police weren't sure who the hit and run victim was. Then her parents called police New Year's Day when no one heard from her. I just knew something was wrong. Now they're surrounded by dozens of relatives and friends, trying their best to stay strong, thinking about that smile. She could hug you with a smile, warm you up. A situation no business owner ever wants to deal with. Just in shock, you know, we're just going to have to just assess the situation minute for minute. It's, it's our income and our family. That's about it. For 30 years, the Corsican Cafe on Mechanic Street has been owned and operated by Robin Wade's family. My son works here. I got to call him and let him know that uh, he won't be cooking today. The restaurant is well known for its award-winning chowder by some of the most well-known people in town. It was a great place. We'd stop in periodically and have lunch. Now, it's also known for what happened early this morning. First crews arrived. They had heavy fire showing out the rear of the structure on the second floor. Yeah. It's crazy. A lot of people in this community are thankful no other buildings burned. In fact, that one sits right behind the restaurant a few feet away. Stephen Brown's building didn't get on fire. Investigators say there wasn't a sprinkler system in the part of the building that burned. The damage is extensive, but owners say they're just glad everyone is okay. It's just a building. We didn't get hurt. Nobody got hurt. Nobody's dead. Yeah. And, it's a uh, building. We'll just do the best we can with what we've got. I hope they can recover very quickly. Recovering and moving forward is what the owners will focus on, with neighbors who are ready to help them pick up the pieces. Oh, I'm sure as a community, if these people need anything, we'll all pitch together and do whatever we can to help them. So we have some really, really great people that, you know, have supported us and love us. In Freeport, we shall rise again. Jared Pelletier, CBS 13 News. The airport baggage claim, where there's no shortage of luggage or loved ones looking at arrival times. 9.56 is when they're supposed to come. So let me look at my flight number just to make sure. It's a nervous excitement. Um, we're just feeling so blessed that our kids are coming back. Now I'm anxious. Now you can get all the anxiety. Yes. Panicky. Anxiety today doesn't compare to panic felt over the weekend when eight students and three adults from the Greater Portland Christian School were on a service trip in Ecuador. 
And I look and I go, wow, it's closer than I thought. Parts of cities and towns like Manta, where the students were, are now destroyed. Thankfully, the group survived, catching a flight home last night. My husband's already told me I'm not supposed to go through the two doors. Within minutes, feelings of anxiety turn into relief almost as soon as the plane is landed. Mom looks, then she's off like a sprinter out of a runner's block. Her son, Sean, the finish line, first a warm embrace, then tears. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know me, I cry when you want a field trip. <laughs> okay. Sean's group was in a pastor's home when he felt the shaking. We get outside and then it got really, really bad. And then I heard bricks falling down. I heard screaming and I'm like, oh, dang, we might not make it back. When I saw more damage, the more uncomfortable I felt. That feeling turned into a desire to help a family that lost its home. They went inside and started rifling through all their things and came up with hundreds of dollars between them. It felt like it was a call from God. Time to reflect, time to try and get back to normal, with a stop planned on the way to Maine. We have our favorite pizza place on the way home. CBS 13's Jared Pelletier brings us to the special event from Chelsea. The sound of taps travels through Togus National Cemetery. It's a lot of pride today. I get a little choked up and I think about it. Some misty eyed on a misty morning. Every year, no matter what the weather is like on Memorial Day, it's always going to be rain or shine. People pay tribute to servicemen and women who've made the ultimate sacrifice. I think about some of the guys that I serve with, and I often say I'm just fortunate to be here and glad to be here. Fortunate and glad after a close call in Vietnam. I lost an artery in my left leg and almost almost bled out, but I didn't. Got it stopped, and here I am. Here to help lay wreaths at Toga Cemetery's monuments. One now sits at all three. This day is meant for remembering those who died while fighting for freedom. Some say they can't help but think about all veterans. All those who served before and are serving right now as we speak in harm's way. Of the men and women remembered in this cemetery today, two of them are Medal of Honor recipients. David Scannell, who died in 1923, and John Preston, who served in the Civil War and died in 1885. A 21-gun salute to soldiers who never came home can make you stop and think about their families. I hope that they're getting the support that they need, that they're, today's a good day for them, no matter what happened. And what they laid their lives on the line for. An excellent opportunity for the, the whole country to stop, take a look, and say, hey, thanks for what we have. That's what it means to me. In Chelsea, Jared Pelletier, CBS 13 News.